How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss the strangest comet in the solar system. And forget 3 I Atlas, forget other interstellar comets, because we actually have something much weirder right here, and you're looking at this object in this image. This is known as 2060 Chiron. One of the most puzzling and most dynamic objects in the solar system, representing a small icy body that actually defies easy classification and behaves both like an asteroid a comet, and potentially something else. But more importantly, in some of the most recent studies, scientists have also discovered that it's actually doing something we've never seen anywhere. It's now developing a new complex ring system right before our eyes. And so let's discuss these studies and these discoveries in more detail, but I guess first let's discuss exactly where this object is, what we think it is, and how it compares to some of the other stuff we know in the solar system. And technically Chiron classifies as the first member of a very peculiar class of objects known as centaurs. Named after mythological half-humans, half-horse creatures, because here centaurs are also basically these hybrid objects. They orbit the Sun mostly between Jupiter and Neptune, with their orbits usually crossing at least one of these larger planets. Here are roughly where some of these objects are located. And it's the location that makes these objects so fascinating. They're basically trapped in these very unstable orbits that are only going to survive for maybe a few thousand years. And that's because they're constantly being influenced by the gravity of the giant planets, with all these objects constantly being reshuffled, and moved across the solar system. And though for some of them they're going to maintain these orbits for a few million years, the majority of them are not going to be that lucky. But when it comes to their origin, we actually think they come from much farther away, possibly the Kuiper Belt, basically the location where you find Pluto and a lot of similar objects. And so as the orbit of some of these objects interacts with Neptune, they might become perturbed and might become trapped in the inner solar system. So centaurs, in essence, are kind of like transitional stages between stable Kuiper Belt objects and much shorter period comets known as Jupiter family comets. And both of these types of objects have been discovered in a lot of different locations. And that of course makes centaurs very important for planetary science. Not only do they represent the remnants of the early solar system, usually containing a lot of primordial ices and a lot of primordial materials, but also by studying them, we can kind of look back in time, discovering how the solar system evolved just by seeing the emissions from these rocks and by seeing how they change. And the thing is, most of these objects are relatively new to us. As a matter of fact, the first object, Chiron, was only discovered in 1977. It was discovered by Charles Cole. And at the time it was initially recognized as the first member of this new population orbiting between the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt. And though at first we thought it was just an asteroid, which is why it's called 2060 Chiron, or basically 2060th asteroid ever found, in 1989, or approximately 12 years later, Astronomers noticed something super strange. It was also exhibiting cometary behavior. It became very bright by 1988, and at this point it was approximately 12 astronomical units away from the Sun. And by 1989 it developed a coma, a feature that we usually observe around comets. So basically here it had a cloud of gas and dust surrounding it. As a matter of fact, by 1993 it even had a very tiny tail. And while it really happened because its orbit, as you can see here, is very elliptical. It goes from being farther away from the Sun to being much closer, at which point it usually turns into a comet. And so, as of today, it's technically considered to be both an asteroid and a comet. Or technically a minor planet and a comet, which goes by the designation 95P Chiron. And in terms of size, this is not a tiny object. It's basically this big. Its mean diameter is roughly around 200 kilometers, making this an enormously large comet. Just for comparison, the famous 3i Atlas we've discussed so many times now is maybe about 5 kilometers in total. And so the fact that Chiron is still actively venting material suggests that it hasn't really been in this location for a very long time. It must be a new arrival from the Kuiper Belt. And while in the last few years this object has been studied by a lot of different telescopes and of course by the James Webb. And that's because it's just so mysterious compared to anything else we know. For example, just over a year ago, James Webb observed Chiron when it was still active. And in this case, it was actually active even though it was super far away from the Sun. It was almost at its aphelion, the farthest point from the Sun, which is approximately 19 astronomical units. And this provided us with a lot of detail on what seems to be on the surface of this object. Now as you can see, these images are not particularly clear, but this was enough to detect different chemicals. And while on its surface, or within its icy grains, 
scientists detected a diverse inventory of volatile ices. Obviously carbon dioxide, which is usually present in most comets, but also carbon monoxide, water ice in its amorphous state, and a few more unexpected elements. Here it also contains more complex frozen organic compounds, such as for example light hydrocarbons, ethane, propane, and acetylene, which was actually quite remarkable, especially the detection of propane. This was the propane in its ice phase, detected from a small body, which hasn't really been seen before. And a lot of these molecules could be primordial components inherited from the pre-solar nebula, or basically the cloud that eventually formed the solar system. So some of these molecules are potentially over four and a half billion years old. Although they could have also been formed later through some kind of a chemical reaction we still don't understand. But some of the strangest discoveries also came from the gas surrounding Chiron from its coma. Here James Webb detected fluorescent emissions of methane, which is kind of strange because methane is a very volatile gas and normally turns into gas or sublimates very quickly. And so methane emissions along with the gas emissions of CO2 served as the first proof that methane is being released due to a very specific thermal process. Very likely a specific density phase transition inside the amorphous water ice. This usually happens around 61 Kelvin in temperature and it basically changes water ice from one form to the other. And this potentially released a lot of the methane that was trapped within. And by the way, if you want to learn more about these strange phases of ice, check out one of the recent videos in the description. But this mechanism potentially explains why Chiron becomes cometary so far from the sun. And actually here, another strange observation was in regards to the shape. This was a fan-shaped coma. It was spreading out toward the sun, suggesting that the shape itself was not coming from the entire body, but from some very localized sources, that were directly responding to the solar heating. Once again, confirming that this is just a bizarre object. We actually don't really see this around comets very often. But if its dual nature and its bizarre chemistry were not strange enough, we now have a new bizarre observation. Because Chiron is also the only comet known to us that contains rings. This is one of the few well-known ring bodies in the solar system, that along with the other centaur known as Chariko, and dwarf planets Haumea, Quawar, and Chiron represent some of the most exciting objects we've discovered so far, but also objects where we're not entirely certain how these rings actually formed. But crucially, once again, this is the only comet known to us to contain rings. And the possibility of these rings was actually just a suggestion and a hypothesis back in 2015. This was based on a very unexpected dimming event that was observed accidentally when researchers were trying to see this object as it passed in front of very distant stars. This is the event we refer to as an occultation. And so several of these occultations in 1993 and 2011 revealed something strange. This object produced several dips. And the only way to explain these dips is either because there is some kind of a moon in orbit or because it has rings. But because in this case these dips happened on both sides, it had to be the ring. But the truly fascinating discovery was only made super recently. This was once again based on occultation studies from some of the most recent observations in 2022-2023. And the conclusion from this recent study is that the ring system is actually evolving. Astronomers now believe we may be witnessing the real-time formation and evolution of a ring system for the first time in history. And so here the September 2023 observations revealed a very complex environment with the Chiron surrounded by some kind of a broad diffuse disk-like structure extending by about 550 kilometers as you can see in this image. And embedded within the disk there are at least three confined dense rings. They're now referred to as Chi-1r, Chi-2r and Chi-3r. They orbited approximately 273, 325 and 438 kilometers from Chiron center. But adding to all of this, researchers now discovered the fourth location, Chi-4r. This is approximately 1380 kilometers away from the center. And this is a very strange finding because the rings Chi-3r and Chi-4r seem to lie beyond the classical Roche limit. Or basically the limit where we expect objects to fall apart because of the tidal forces. This is essentially why Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus and Neptune also contain rings. Here the tidal forces disrupted some kind of a moon, producing the rings. And so within this limit, no moon can usually coalesce. But outside of this limit, we expect the rings to start clumping into something larger, forming some kind of a satellite. But here, the existence of material outside of this boundary suggests that something is preventing these particles from gathering, or maybe the rings are simply too new to have actually formed a moonlit for now. In other words, what we seem to be seeing here is maybe a growth of moons 
around a distant object. Although in this case, because Chiron is also not particularly spherical and is somewhat irregular in shape, it also creates a very chaotic inner zone, possibly preventing some of these objects from coalescing. And so there's a lot of instability, but the chance for these rings to eventually turn into moons right now seems to be pretty high. Or maybe they'll actually disperse over time because some of the simulations suggested that because of this instability, the detected disk and some of these rings could be just temporary. They might actually disappear within months or maybe a year. Unless they're being replenished. And so it's this replenishment that seems to be caused by the comet reactivity that possibly produced these rings and possibly is causing them to slowly collect more material. For example, the large outbursts seen in 2021 could have been responsible for the production of at least one of these rings. But even here, we're basically observing a very complex ring structure that's been actively formed and actively evolved because some of these rings have already started to form a kind of a resonance or a kind of a stability, specifically a spin orbit resonance of 1 to 3. And so scientists now speculate that these tiny chaotic regions might be responsible for the observed features and even responsible for the gap observed between the rings, which actually makes Chiron super cool. This is not just some kind of a rock anymore, this is not even some kind of a comet, because here we found an object that's actively changing in front of our eyes and is either evolving a ring system or potentially producing its own moons. So this is a very dynamic object undergoing a major transformation in real time. And not like hundreds of years, we're talking about something in months and years observable with modern telescopes. And so not only does this object provide clues about the original ISIS that formed the outer planets, its constantly changing ring system also offers us a very rare possibility to study a process we've never studied before. Basically, how ring systems form, how moons form, and how objects transform from one type to another. And the discoveries from this object will potentially teach us a little bit more about objects like Saturn, or even other ringed objects, including some of the dwarf planets. But obviously, even though the telescopes can tell us a lot about this object, it would be much, much cooler if we could one day visit it. So scientists today agree that the ideal way to fully understand this is by having a dedicated space mission. And so there's actually been a proposal for the Chiron Orbiter mission, but nothing has been approved yet. Here this would be some kind of a flyby that would hopefully help us understand some of these centaurs a little bit better. But until some of these future missions or future observations, at least for now, Chiron is still just going to remain this very bizarre oddball comet, showing us some really bizarre effects, and most importantly, showing us an actual planetary evolutionary process in real time. And though scientists are still not certain about what's causing the rings to form, or even what's causing them to change, in this case, this mystery only makes Chiron so much more fascinating. Which means that we'll definitely come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos once there are some updates. And until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few secret videos. Additionally, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.